Hello viewers, today we are going to be attempting to repair this Dial Gizmo Post-A-Tone Converter. I purchased this about oh, probably four or five months ago now and it wasn't cheap either. It cost somewhere around fifty dollars which is outrageous for for what this is. But nonetheless I got it anyways because I wanted to be able to use rotary telephones again. Um, I used this about three times and I went to use it yesterday or whenever it was a few days ago and it didn't work. Now if you notice here the wire is freely, freely moving in and out and you can see here towards the bottom that there's a big blob of glue there with what looks like two wires in it. So I believe the wires have detached from the board already, which is quite ridiculous. Now I've neglected to grab a screwdriver before starting the video, so I'm going to go grab one. We use this one of these little precision flathead screwdrivers to open this up and see what's going on in here. This is not the easiest thing in the world to open up. There we go. Okay, now it looks like we're going to have to remove some more screws in order to get access to the bottom side of the board. Now admittedly the board is reasonably well made and this looks like a quality piece of, of equipment. However, I still just don't believe that this is anywhere near $50 worth of equipment. Now this is actually a somewhat user serviceable contraption. There is a dip switch here, which you see right here, which is used to change some of the settings on this device. I'm not exactly familiar with it because uh, it's just got functions that I will never use, so I'd never bother to peruse through the manual about that. But anyways, um, let's pull this off of here. And you can see our problem shows up in the sense that the phone line is not connected to anything. Now, we can see here on this glue that, or at least I can tell in person, I'm not sure if we'll see on the video, but you can see this side is flat and has the indentations of the circuit board. So it would have been sitting on here like this. I don't know how this was connected because I don't see any exposed wire on the on the blurry wires here and the exposed copper. The very very tip of this I do believe is is on um, is exposed from the glue here but by and large I don't know how in the world this was actually making contact so we're gonna have to redesign this in a sense because this is not a very good design what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and solder this back on and I'm going to figure out some other way to create a strain relief to prevent this wire from shifting around inside the unit. So I'm going to have to, I'm 
I'm not sure if I can just pull this off of here. Oh, perhaps I can. Okay. That'll save us a little bit of time. Okay, good. Um, now, you'll notice here, and I don't like this, this is relatively cheaply designed in the sense that this is a regular old phone cable, and they just cut some of the wires off to make it two wire, which is really all we need for um, this particular application. Actually, I don't, I don't like this, uh, this soldering joint as a whole. I'll zoom in on this here, and you can see. It's pretty deplorable. Not too much. Some some white stuff in the middle there. So I'm actually gonna clean this off with some cleaner and see if that gets rid of that white stuff. Okay, I've got the infamous cleaner here. And let's just see if we can clean up that and that joint a little bit. Okay, good. It's left a little bit of a residue on there, but I think that'll suffice. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to attempt to solder this back on. Gotta make sure it's solder in the right right direction here. And the telephone is ringing. Of course, it's not a pulse style telephone because I can't use those right now. I'm going to attempt to strip this wire. And these strippers are a little bit too big for this particular application, so they don't work very well. But it may, uh, it'll have to do. And of course, this is going to be. This is strand and wire, oh brother. You know what? I'm not going to use this wire. This is going to be a nightmare to get this stripped. I'm going to put a different cord on here. I've got a new piece of wire that we're going to use. This is telephone wire, but it's a lot easier to work with. I'm going to have to put a new... Oh jeez. A new plug on here because this is raw it doesn't have anything on either end but anyways um, let's get this stripped here I'm not sure if this will let me strip as much as I want I may have to go get a a knife instead and do it that way. Oh, there we go. That'll work. Okay, now we're not going to use the black wire and we're not going to use the yellow wire because there is no uh, no use for them in this application and I should have when I was downstairs brought up the better strippers because these only go down to 20 gauge the ones downstairs go down to 24 gauge but it looks like these will work just fine anyways 
Okay, so as you can see, that stripped a lot easier. And we have two good connections to work with. Of course, this is way too long, so we're going to cut that off momentarily. Okay. Alright, so that's what we have now. And this is what we're going to solder on to the board here. Okay, that should suffice. So now on the other end of this cable, whoa, on the other end of this cable, we're going to install a modular plug. Now, last time I did this on video, I had a particular individual come in the comments box and scold me for using this tool because they didn't have it now you can't do this without the tool I mean it, it, so we're going to use the tool again because that's just how it's done so we're going to strip the wire first and then hopefully this will just pull off of here maybe Okay, and now I want to make sure that put the colors on correctly. Which admittedly I'm having a very hard time seeing. I'm going to guess this is the right way to do it. Yeah, I think so. And this is the last modular plug I have on hand, so if I screw this up, I'm going to have to wait a couple hours for my order of more to come in. Okay. So that's connected now. If I can just get it out of the tool, there we go. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this back on the on the circuitry here, and we're gonna give this a test. And then before I close it back up for good. I'm going to devise some means of, of getting a good strain relief put on there so this doesn't happen again. And perhaps having a longer cord on there will also help with some of the uh, the strain issues on the wire. And 
Okay, now I gotta go grab a telephone. Or rather, um, actually, we can just use this telephone. How does this connect? I always forget. Okay, so, um, all right. I gotta grab a different wire. Okay, so we're just going to use this AT&T 210 telephone I have here on the desk. Plug in the converter. Okay, the converter is plugged in. And now I will take this cord here. I'll switch this over to pulse. And I got disconnect this here. I just unnecessarily woke up the computer. Okay, we'll make this connection. What is the problem here? I've never liked the way things plug into this. It always gets stuck. You know, I'm wondering if I ought to just get an extension jack on here because I can take these terminals and feed on a different uh, thing. Well, hopefully this will get in there enough just for the test. It is working, but the sound isn't correct. Okay, it sounds fine now. I don't know why it didn't sound okay before, but anyways, it's all right. So that's that's good and working. So now, now I got to figure out what we can do about this strain relief here. And yeah, we'll leave it there for now. We'll just do the strain relief, and then perhaps some other time, I'll put another jack. I'll get a jack and connect the terminals on here and do something else because this this plug kind of stinks but we'll deal with that later okay so for the strain relief what we're going to do here take this back off I got some tape here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap some tape around the wire at the point where it's sitting in the little cavity there and this is a very cheap means of making a strain relief but it's very effective so now I don't have any cutting implements in here and that's, that's not good Now that's not the greatest, but we'll do. Of course, I have to flex the wire a million times to get this on here. I guess I should have thought of this before before I made the connections. But oh well.
So now when I go to put this back in, I'm going to feed this down in through here and it will hold it in place a lot better than it was before. I think perhaps I put a little too much tape on there, but let's see if we can make it work anyways. Nah, I gotta get a cutting implement. Okay, let's try that. Okay, of course that's... Well... Mm. I think that's good enough. That should hold up to normal use. I mean, this isn't an item that really gets moved around while it's being used anyways. So we'll do that. Uh, let's screw this back in now. And it should be ready to go. I'll go ahead and do one last test on it and make sure everything's okay. I'll get a real rotary dial telephone this time. We'll use a Bell Systems 500 for the test. Small little phone cord here, ready to go. Right, here it is. And I gotta get this connected to the line. And here we go. And if this is working properly, you'll be able to see the pulses go by on the loop indicator there. And of course, you can hear the tones as well. Testing, test, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, you can also dial it with the hook switch. Okay, now I'll call it back just to make sure everything works.
notice that this thing restricts a lot of RAM. And so, even though I have plenty of... What in the world is going on with this cord? Even though I have plenty of RAM on the line, we got 12 RAM going through the line, the telephone hardly rings when it's connected through this thing. So that that's definitely a drawback of it. But other than that, works pretty well. And I could put this um, in the front of the line right off the amplifier and get pulse styling across all the telephones, but these 500 sets and 2500 sets wouldn't ring. Interestingly enough, the newer 2500 that I have over there, let's see if I can get it in view. Well, anyways, this isn't a good tripod, so I can't adjust the angle very well. But anyways, the newer 2500s and the newer 2554s, and I'll probably turn that off, they do ring okay. So, I guess they, they pull less ran, or perhaps it's a frequency thing, I don't know. Um, I should play around with it some more. But anyways, for now, this works, and um, hopefully this will hold.